So let's look at the quick uh, list of things that we're going to cover in this live demo. First, we will walk through a brief introduction to BI Connector. Then we will walk through four, five different scenarios of BI Connector demo. First one is connecting to the OBI subject areas from Tableau, how it's getting started. And then we will create a simple report with year-over-year -year monthly revenue trend report using data from OBIE by connecting to the OBI subject areas to which a particular user has access. Then we'll see how you can share this report with your colleagues using the Tableau server. And then the next thing we'll be looking at is connecting to OBI reports directly from Tableau. And we'll look at how to personalize this report to create a year-over-year -year revenue trade from an order details report. And then we'll look at the takeaways from this demo and also open up for Q&A. So let's begin by looking at a quick introduction to BI Connector. The main problem that, uh, that the enterprises today have at Tableau has invested years and millions into creating the OBI RPD. They have uh, created the business data, metadata into the OBI. They have created the complex security model into OBI and created a number of reports. But OBI is lagged behind in terms of the use of ease of use and also from a visualization capability. And that's where new tools such as Tableau have come in, which provide the end user capability that they uh, in terms of data discovery, visualization, mashups, and quick, which are easy to learn. And also from a speed up change, basically you're able to make, look at the visualizations faster, model them, and then see if that makes sense from a business perspective. Those are capabilities that Tableau offers and which OBI is, doesn't offer. So Tableau delivers these self-service capabilities that are uh, missing in OBI, but until now, it was difficult to connect from Tableau to OBI. So users had to literally jump through the hoops to get to the data. One way was they were looking at CSVs, exporting them into CSVs, or staging, creating staging areas, duplicating data in staging areas, and then or going directly into the database, which creates a lot of issues. First one, it's manual, it's laborious, it's, it takes a lot of uh, effort to create, do this, go through this, either in from a user perspective who has to export it and then manipulate the data to make it available from through the visualizing Tableau. It's costly to maintain, if you're, especially if you're creating SQL scripts or if you're actually creating a duplicate parallel access through the database, then there is also the data duplication when you're, if you're creating staging areas. And the most important aspect is the security issue. Most of your OBIE has very sensitive, you're, you're showing your most important business data in OBIE and you want to make sure that the data is accessed in a secure way and through the security models that you've already set up in OBI. So, but if you go through the CSV or staging area, then you have challenges from a security perspective. And the last point, most important point, is that there could be information inconsistencies between what is available in OBI and then once the data is taken out and then visualized in Tableau. So, you want to make sure that the data, the results that you see in OBI and the, what the results that you see through Tableau visualization are safe. That may not always be the case because you might have to reduplicate the data, there could be bugs and so on. So those are some of the issues of when, when you go through a CSV or staging area or creating direct database access. Now there's uh, so the other challenge is looking at through the native ODBC. The native ODBC driver doesn't work. Basically, you are not able to connect from Tableau directly to OBI. It requires extensive changes in OBI. You have to create a primary key in folders which and expose them through Tableau. And even if you do that, there are still connectivity issues. So there are a lot of challenges in terms of connecting from Tableau into OBI. And that's exactly where BI Connector we designed and developed BI Connector to solve these specific challenges. It allows you to connect directly from Tableau into OBI RPD at the presentation layer in just a few minutes. And you are able to access the data, metadata in OBI using the OBI's own security model. You are able to reuse the business logic that has been set up in OBI. All the joins that you have set up in OBI are now available through Tableau. You and you don't have to make any changes in OBI. So this creates significant time savings from a 
providing this capability to the end user. And it's very easy to install. And the other, we talked about the information consistency. So by going through the BI connector, you are able to make sure that the results that you see in tab in OBI is exactly the same results. You would get the same results when you do the uh, analysis through Tableau. So since the data is coming from OBI and also uh, the analysis, some of the OBI are taking advantage of the joins and the aggregations in OBI. And by going, taking this approach, you're able to bring together the best of Tableau and OBI, the visualization and the self-service capabilities of Tableau with the metadata and the security model of OBI. So you're able to create a truly governed self-service BI environment for OBI by using Tableau and BI Connector. So with that, we'll quickly jump to the, the demo. So we're going to walk through five different scenarios as we discussed earlier. The first one would be to connect to the OBI subject area, and then we'll create a simple report. Then we'll share it through the Tableau server. Then we'll walk through the new add-on module, which allows you uh, BI a Tableau user to connect to OBI reports and create a simple personalized existing report and visualize it in Tableau. So let's quickly walk through these features. So the way to connect to OBI from Tableau desktop through BI Connector is to use other databases. What I've, I've installed BI Connector in this machine and I've created a DSN. This is an ODBC DSN using BI Connector. So I've created a DSN called OBI Connect. We will use that to connect to Tableau uh, OBI subject areas. And this brings up the BI Connector UI. It basically has a data source name, which is the DSN name, and you're connecting to subject areas. And the server name is your OBI URL. So this would be your BI dev dot company dot com colon nine seven. Typically it could be like a nine seven zero four slash analytics. That would be the URL that you would use. In this case it would be BI this is the, you just remove the analytics and then you use the, the URL, URI, and the port number. This will be your 9704 or 9804. And the username here is actually your OBI username. So in this case, we have created a user, OBI user called WebLogic. You're going to use that. Click login. Once you have that, so then you say, okay. So then this is connected to OBI and you're ready to go. Pretty much from now on, you are able to access the subject area which this particular user has access to in OBI. So these are the subject areas. This is a sample schema in OBI. For example, sample sales flight, sample target light, etc. So let's pick sample sales flight. As you can see, the performance is pretty good. We are able to get the right meta, the metadata into ta Tableau and then display it here. And the tables here corresponds to the folder under the sample sales light subject area in OBI. So there's a base facts folder, and then there are offices, orders, products, time, dimensions, etc. And one thing you want to note is that Tableau doesn't support a hierarchical display of folders. So here it is displayed in a flat alphabetical order. So for example, more office, more product, more time, etc., are subfolders under offices, products, and time. So, but it's displayed in an alphabetical order here. So now, from now on, it's as simple as what you would do with a typical uh, data source inside Tableau. So you can let's select the base facts. Let's bring in offices. Let's bring in products, and let's bring in time. So, BI Connector manages the joins between those. It doesn't create any new join between these folders in from OBI, but rather it makes ensures that the queries that come from Tableau are converted into corresponding queries in OBI and take and takes advantage of the existing joins in OBI. So once you have created uh, selected the folders that you want to visualize, now let's quickly go to the sheets here. So what we will do now we will create so connect, so we'll create a simple work report that will show a year over year monthly revenue trend and uh, do some, put some filters, etc. You can look at Tableau as another client to your OBI. So think of it as similar to logging in from your web browser into OBI. Similar to that, now you're just, you're just connecting through Tableau into OBI. 
So now you have these uh, measures and also these dimensions available. So let's start with this trend here. So we'll put this. Instead of calendar date, let's select a month. And then we will put uh, another. And these are things that Tableau makes it so easy to visualize. So we have the colors. Let's put this here. So we got the uh, year calendar year here. Now let's put the revenue. What if we put this year revenue? So that's as simple as that. So you created now a monthly trend of product revenue year over year trend. So basically 2008, we have data from 2008, 2009, and 2010. We have created that. Now let's say you want to filter based on some office. So let's bring in office here. Let's select Bluebell, Casino, College, Cooper, Aiden, Eiffel, Figueroa, Office. So the data is actually being pulled in from OBIE. The queries are all being run against OBIE, but you also get the advantage of Tableau. If the data is already pulled into Tableau's in memory, then you get the performance benefit of getting accessing the data locally from within Tableau's in memory. So now we have applied the filter for just those six or seven offices. Now, if you really again want to go and further apply another filter, so let's say we select a bunch of it. Here it has all the products. Let's select, we just want to apply the, whole, the first six or seven product categories. So now we have further refined it. So you can quickly see that how easy it becomes to visualize this data and create reports in our visualizations in Tableau from OBI data. And this data is actually coming in live from OBI. And you can also, one of the key capabilities that Tableau provides is that you can extract the data and that is feasible. All it takes is basically going here and then converting it into an extract and you can extract the data locally into Tableau. So now let's, you have created a simple year over year monthly trend report from a set of offices, office and product types. Now we want to publish this. You want to, let's say you want to share this with your executive. So how do you do that? So you have, let's, if you have your Tableau server, let's, you can connect to the Tableau server. So you use the Tableau server. It's already connected, signed in to that. Now, the first thing that you want to do is publish the data source. So let's say we publish this data source. I'm just going to assume some default values here. It's already there, but let's overwrite it. So it, what, it, what it's doing is basically it's making the I connector, the particular data source that you have created available as a data source to the Tableau server users. And it's important to note that to get the live data into the Tableau server, you also need to install BI Connector Server Edition on the Tableau server machine so that users from Tableau server can access the data, OBI data through the Tableau server. So now we have published this particular data source. Now the next thing is let's publish the worksheet here that we created. So let's give it a name, live demo. We selected the sheet here, like demo one, and then let's publish. Okay, so now it's published to the server. So when you can want to see this preview of the data, that means it's already published. And this is now, this worksheet is now available to your Tableau server into a wider audience, whether it's your executives or your colleagues to make it available. And you can also check, let's bring this up in the browser window. I'm gonna bring this here. So you can see that this particular sheet has been published. And this data is now available in Tableau Server for anybody to, uh, for the authorized users. So you can, one of the things that is available, uh, that is important here is that you can set when you publish a data source and also a worksheet, you can set 
the worksheet as well as the data source to prompt the user for OBI username and password. So let's say you publish a data source for a specific monthly trend for all products, and then you can set it up such that whenever they come, whenever a user connects from the tablet server, they would be prompted to enter their OBI username and password so that they only see the data that they are authorized to see. So you can in, take advantage of the OBI security model even from the Tableau server. In the particular demo that I showed you, I embedded the username password. So this is useful if you want to create a worksheet and then share it with your executives. So that could be, so they don't, they are not prompted to enter their username password every time, so you can just make it available. But for other users, you can actually make it, you can add, prompt set the worksheet so that it prompts the user for the username and password. And on top of that, let's say you have set it up, you can still take advantage of the Tableau security model in terms of sites and user groups. You can provide, you can define which user group has access to the data source that you created for OBIE, and you can secure the access to the OBI data further using the old Tableau security model. So if this makes it very convenient to not only get great visualization, but also to define a, put together a well-defined security model-based access to the OBI data. So this, uh, so, so as you see, it's very easy to bring, uh, publish it in the Tableau server. If you're in our website, uh, if you go to the support uh, link in our website, you would see step-by-step -step guides for publishing uh, for creating uh, worksheets as well as publishing uh, publishing worksheets into Tableau Server. Uh, what are the prerequisites that are needed? What what are some of the things that you need to watch out for, and so on. So, please, uh, if you get a chance, please uh, take a look at it. So next, we will go to go to the fourth demo scenario, which is connecting to Tableau or OBI reports. So we'll close this connection. To a new data source. In this case, I'm going to connect to OBA Connect Reports. So this is another DSM data source that I've created using BI Connector. Brings up the BI Connector UI. So in this case, it's as you can notice, it is connected to the reports. You have set the reports as a uh, catalog to which you want to connect, and then you use your regular US OBI username password. So now it has connected to OBIA, the reports catalog, and all the reports now that are available to the web logic, the user web logic is now available here. Basically, if you were logging with your username, you would see all the reports that are accessible to you. So in this case, let's, you can search for the reports, since there could be hundreds of reports that you, to which you have access. Let's say you want to pick the order details report. It's fetching the metadata for the report and then what it does, what BI Connector does is that it converts your OBI report into a table-like metadata in Tableau. So now this is available as a table, similar to a table in Tableau. So you have order details, all the columns that are coming in from order details report in OBI are now available as columns here. So now the advantage of this approach is that, you know, you can easily provide this the report as a data source to your users, and they can personalize how they want to visualize this data for them. So in this case, let's say if I want to create a, a quick report of a similar approach, let's say we want to see a year over year, um, year over year revenue based on orders from uh, the various products. So let's bring in order date here. Let's change this to again, same similar thing, month. Let's put this as month. And then let's make this here. And we bring in the revenue. So you can see, quickly see how the revenue trend over, uh, over the various months from 2000 Eight to 2000, 2008, 2009, and 2010. Now let's say you want to see, compare, you want to see how the build quantity went through. So let's just bring this here. So now you have to, you are able to see the trend of revenue as well as the report build quantities quickly create this report. So the advantage of this approach is that 
we can say it's very easy for end users to visualize these OBIA reports. They can personalize the way they want to see it. Sometimes your report could have you know, 150 or 60 columns, and not all the columns may be useful for the end users. Now with this, the users can pick and choose which columns they want to see and how they want to visualize it. And it makes it very, uh, it provides a self-service capability that is missing in OBI. So makes, and you can publish this report also through the Tableau server, just like you did with the Tableau with the OBI subject area. So you can make it available to a wider audience and with a more richer analysis. So this kind of gives you an idea of the power of this capability in terms of accessing the OBI reports through the Tableau. So, so we went through these five different scenarios, connecting to OBI subject area. We saw the report of a monthly revenue trend report created from subject area. Then we saw how to share the report using Tableau server. Then we also saw how to connect to the OBI reports. Very simple, very easy to for an end user to connect to the OBI and then visualize it. And then also we finally saw how to create a quick report or personalize an existing OBI report with a much richer analysis in, from Tableau. So what are the advantages of this approach? Basically, from a, if you're a business user, you're able to access OBI data in live or extract or extract it as needed. You're able to access it via the desktop for a richer analysis, or you can also ask, access it through the browser. You're able to visualize, and you can do mashups. So you can combine OBI data with your other data sources, whether it's a SQL database or is it an Excel or any other Hadoop or any other source, and you can mash them up and you can create new analysis. And you can publish it and you can make, make it available for a wider range of audience in your organization. And if you are in IT, you're able to create a governed OBI data source. So basically the data is secure, it's validated, it is available, it has been tested, the, OBI, the data in OBI is tested. So now you make it available for from a, as a self-service capability through Tableau and BI Connector. The ad, significant advantage of this approach is that you're able, you're reusing the business metadata and the old security model that you've built over years and spent several million dollars to build it up. Now you're able to reuse it with, in, with ease. And you don't have to make any changes in OBI. You don't have to do any coding. And it takes away all the pain of creating the staging areas or providing direct access to database, takes away all those pains or even seek Excel exports, etc. And it works seamlessly with 10G, 11G, 12G. And of course, uh, from a Tableau perspective, it works with the, all the latest releases. So with that, uh, we come to the conclusion of this demo. Uh, I would like to invite you to try BI Connector if you haven't already tested it. So it's available for a free trial at biconnector.com. There's a free trial button there. You can click and uh, download it and try it out. And if you are interested in participating in the OBI report data program, please contact us at support at biconnector.com. Thank you again for your time. And we hope to see you soon in a future webinar.